Hey, hey, Geek of Spaders. So, I have some special gifts for you today. Uh, I've been doing a lot of painting, and I want to show off some of the stuff that you're going to see soon uh, in various battle reports, both here and on the Blue Table channel, as we move into uh, doing various things there at the studio and things that I've accomplished here. The main thing that I want to show you is I've completed two of our Malifaux crews. So when I was at Feast of Blades, I won a copy of the rule book as well as four of the second edition starter crews. I traded one of them away because I wasn't too interested in Seamus and his Rotten Bells, the Shadows of Red Chapel. But I kept the three, and two of them I've got painted now. I have finished painting the Guild's Justice and Children of December. So, without further ado, I am going to show you uh, each of these two crews. We'll go through each, uh, well not each model, but the, each type of model in the crews. Uh, show you all, let you know how I painted it, uh, what my idea for the scheme was, and uh, just do a little bit of a focus on it. So here we go. First up is Lady Justice. This is the master for the Guild's Justice starter box set. She is a uh, plastic re-sculpt from her version in the first edition. Uh, I think this one's a lot more dynamic. The, I tried to stick pretty close to the box art, honestly, so there wasn't a whole lot of thinking to do in the color scheme. I did, however, decide to go with a desert uh, scheme, just to see what I could do with uh, lighter base tones. I usually do pretty dark or uh, very close to just brown and grass kind of stuff. But, uh, let's give her a spin here, and you can see I kept her hair red. Her having red hair is a pretty standard thing for her color scheme. Um, Just uh, we'll do a spin here and uh, let you get a look at all the models here. So there's Lady Justice. Anyone who's looking to get Lady Justice, I would recommend not attaching her sword blade until after you have painted her. It makes her face a little bit hard to get to. Uh, next up. This is the Scales of Justice. This is Lady Justice's totem, uh, which means it just kind of hangs out on the battlefield. It doesn't do anything particularly significant uh, because it's not a very strong individual, but it's there to buff Lady Justice and her crew. Uh, I decided to go with um, kind of a, I don't know, a darker scheme, I guess. Um, I kept the, the robes on him kind of dirty brown. And I did this mask in kind of a white, dirty leather, uh, kind of like a clean gimp. And you'll notice that on all the models from here on, they all have these, well, except for the judge, they all have these flames on them. And I decided to do those in blue. I could have done them in a red, you know, more of a traditional fire. But I felt like a blue would be a better look, uh, kind of a magical flame thing going on, uh, just because... The guild doesn't like Arcanists, and uh, they seem to be the types of will use fire against fire if that was what it took to, to take care of them. You know, kind of like uh, radical inquisitors or something. This is the judge. Uh, he is the enforcer, or I think enforcer or something. He's the, the other character, basically, that's in. Uh, it's in Lady Justice's uh, crew. I stuck to a scheme pretty similar to the Death Marshals, which you'll see here. Um, the metallics, I do most of my metallics with just uh, Vallejo Model Air metallics. Uh, they are very bright, very smooth metallics, and I love them. Uh, besides that, uh, the majority of the model is dry brushed. Uh, various grays and blacks for their, for the robes. Um, and for his, uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, a uh, shawl. <laughs> uh, the browns were done with uh, the scorched brown and then beastie brown and then a little bit of snake bite leather or cobra leather. I use Vallejo colors, but I know most of the Games Workshop names, so I tend to mix and match them. And then any reds, much like on uh, Lady Justice and on the, gil uh, the judge's uh, bandana there, were done with the Reaper Bloody Red Triad. Uh, the Reaper Triads are fantastic if you're looking for a quick way to get three, get a shade, a base, and a highlight. They're fantastic for that. Um, I, I use them for a lot of things. Uh, I'll show you some Infinity models in another video, and I use those 
triads almost exclusively on a lot of my Infinity stuff. Alright, these are the Death Marshals. These are some of the most dynamic miniatures I've ever uh, painted and assembled. They are fantastic. Uh, there's uh, different head options for all three of them, so you can choose to have either these flaming skull heads, kind of a Ghost Rider style, or uh, you can give them just regular faces. One of these three actually has a regular face, the guy who's got his foot on the coffin. Um, as you can see here, the, the desert basing really makes the blue flames kind of pop off. Uh, I really like it. Um, for the metallics, as they're very bright. Basically, I did uh, was a gunmetal gray and then some steel, Vallejo Model Air steel and then a watered down black ink wash and uh, for my inks I use Liquitex uh, professional acrylic inks um, because they're a whole lot cheaper than Games Workshop inks and uh, you can get a lot of the same colors um, but these are the death marshals for the Guilds of Justice uh, so far Spencer used these in a game not too long ago and uh, we found out that we were using them wrong apparently you're supposed to bury your allies not your enemies and then you can pop up your allies later on the battlefield. But yeah, those are the Death Marshals. So next up, uh, I'm going to show you Rasputina's Children of December. And uh, I just finished painting those today, and I'm, very, I'm quite happy with them. Uh, the, the basing on them is not done yet, because I need to get some crackle paint. But uh, I can show you everything else about them. So here they come. All right, here is Rasputina, the Winter Witch. So, as you can see, I went, uh, I went kind of, uh, I guess, a Russian scheme on her, with the brown pants and the green jacket. Um, but at the same time, I didn't want her to look too you know, rusky. So, uh, the green is actually accomplished with grays and blacks, and then a glaze of uh, Russian cam olive uh, over it, just to give it kind of a tint of green. Um, I did have some issues with her face while painting her, but on the whole, I'm quite pleased. Uh, I'm probably going to go back in at some point and maybe clean up her lip, because I tried to give her a nice little red lip, make it look like she uh, was wearing some lipstick or just had rosy red lips, um, and it uh, didn't quite work. Instead, she looks slightly buck-toothed. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty well pleased with her. The basing, as you can see, is very blue, and the idea there is that they're all going to be standing on ice, very blue ice, um, because uh, all of her spells and all of her minions have to do with cold. Uh, I even did her eyes blue. They're not the best eyes I've done. Uh, I'm still, I still think it looks pretty good. You know, high high tabletop quality. It's just the standard that I usually paint to. And uh, so let's see what her totem looks like. All right, this is the Wendigo. Wendigo is Rasputina's totem. Uh, I painted up the guy that the the Wendigo is attacking to look as much like a guildsman as possible. Uh, Spencer suggested that I do the base half and half, half the desert and then half the ice, make it look like uh, the ice is invading the desert. But I figured it's a guildsman who's off trying to take out Rasputina and the Wendigo got to him first. Um, I wanted the Wendigo to have a very cold uh, gray white look to it. Uh, I think it pulled. I think I was able to pull it off. Um, for the most part, it's just dry brushing. Uh, a lot of what I do is dry brushing, or at least flat brushing, um, different colors. I used to do a lot of base coating and layering, but uh, working at the painting studio has kind of trained that out of me for the most part. Uh, I still do it a lot, and it looks fantastic when I do it. Uh, it, it for what it is, it works great. But uh, this is faster. That's why I just tend to do it a lot. Dry brushing. Will get you. It'll get you places. But uh, this is Wendigo. Uh, he's a lot more exciting looking than his uh, first edition version. Um, a lot more dynamic. Uh, the old, just because he's so little, it was really uh, his original release model, which I don't own, but I have seen. He just looks so tiny. But this way, it looks like he's tiny and dangerous. He's like mini me. Alright, these are the Ice Gaiman. So, while painting these up, uh, I actually had to order a new airbrush. I bought myself a Badger Patriot 105 at the suggestion of uh, the folk, good folks in the War Games Consortium, and I have never been happier with an airbrush. Uh, the 
I it even works with my stupid little testers compressor that gets absolutely no air pressure. But uh, it worked great on these guys. I used Badger Minidaire paints. Um, I started with uh, Troll Hide and then sprayed them with uh, Ghost Hint Plasma Blue. Uh, then went back over with Troll Hide and then Sky Blue and then uh, Snow White. I uh, then went back in with a little bit of turqu watered down turquoise paint and uh, kind of did some lining on them just to pick out some details. You know, distinguish the uh, difference between like the ice in their hands versus their actual fingers. Uh, some of the pieces of ice growing out of their head. Um, some of them I went down to their butt crack because <laughs> they have butt cracks. But uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with how these guys came out. They look nice and cold. Uh, the funny thing is, the colors I use to do this are the exact same colors I use for my uh, engine crystals in Firestorm Armada for my Aquans. Um, so, uh, so if it looks familiar, you may have seen the same exact color scheme on my Aquans uh, in our Firestorm Armada battle report. Speaking of which, now that I have a working airbrush, I will be getting to work on those and will hopefully have some, uh, some progress to show you on them as well. Last but not certain, and certainly not least, is Rasputina's Ice Golem. This is the big gun in the Rasputina Children of December starter. Uh, I paint him exactly the same as the Ice Gaiman, so he looks exactly the same as them. Um, he's got much more pronounced teeth, and I did go in and I picked out the eyes and teeth on him because I didn't want to just leave it as the, the ice blue. I went out and picked him white. Um, I left his underside a little bit darker than I left the game in, but that's because, you know, he's bigger, so there'd be darker ice in the center of him. Uh, the light wouldn't be able to penetrate quite so far through his ice. Um, I did the same thing with the turquoise, watered down, went through and uh, picked out some of the lines that I thought might be a little darker. A few on his back, the ridges on his head, the veins uh, across his arms and chest. And then uh, some of the ice in his knee and around his, I guess, the bottom of his foot. Um, these models look, kind of, I'm really happy with the way the paint job came out. I, I know it could be cleaner, um, but I'm still, I'm still learning the ways of the airbrush. Uh, hopefully my skill will improve as I continue to airbrush different models. And now that I have an airbrush that actually works and doesn't clog up every half second like my uh, Iwata used to. I was a Neo, not really an Iwata. Anyway, uh, if you're looking for tips on airbrushing and what to get to get into airbrushing, I definitely recommend checking out the War Gamers Consortium, or Consortium, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, Chung knows a lot about airbrushes, and uh, he won't lead you astray, I can tell you that much. In the meantime, uh, happy wargaming, and stay tuned for more content.